There's something inside each of us that makes us want to belong, to be connected with others in something bigger than ourselves. As Christians running the race of life, we're blessed to be part of an invisible assembly, the body of Christ worldwide that transcends denominational barriers. Today, we'll explore why it's so vital that we understand the body of Christ and our part in it. Stay with us. From Chicago's Moody Church, this is Running to Win with Dr. Erwin Lutzer, whose clear teaching helps us make it across the finish line. Turn with us to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 as we continue our series on Finding Where You Fit. Dr. Lutzer comes now with his second message, Finding Your Place. I want you to look at the body that you brought with you today. I think that you did bring yours. You've already seen it in the mirror, and we can tell that, by the way, as we look at you. You've already seen your body in the mirror. I want to begin today by talking about a part of your body that you have never seen, but one I know you have. It's a requirement to attend Moody Church. It's your brain. Donald M. McKay, a specialist in brain research, described the complexity of the brain this way. In order to form a realistic idea of the structural complexity inside your head, imagine that one cubic millimeter of your cerebral cortex were magnified to the size of a lecture hall. In this magnified one millimeter cube, we might expect then, we would find, something to the order of 100,000 nerve cells. If each of these had 1,000 to 10,000 connections, each connection adjustable in ways that might be functionally important, then within this whole we would have a tangled structure containing up to a thousand million functionally significant elements. Depicted on the same scale, the nerve fibers running from the brain to other parts of your body would extend for distances up to a thousand kilometers. But now let's take the arithmetic a step farther. The human cortex, that's your brain, is about 2,000 square centimeters in area and on average about 3 millimeters thick. In order to complete our imaginary model of your brain on the same scale, then we would need something like 600,000 of these lecture halls stacked side by side and three deep. That is the kind of complexity that challenges the scientist as he contemplates your brain ticking peacefully away inside your head as you drift off to sleep in church. (laughs) That's not the way the sentence ended, but that's the way I ended it. Can you imagine that you have that kind of complexity taking place in your mind at this very moment? It would be almost impossible for any scientist to tell us what's happening just in the communication process. To think that I am forming words and those words are uh, able to communicate. It is a mystery that uh, confounds us. Well, when God gave you the body that you brought with you today, He uses it in the Bible as a metaphor of the mystical body of Christ. I'm not sure if I like that word mystical because many people think that it means that it's somehow unreal. No, it's very real, very, very real and direct. But the body of Jesus Christ in the Bible is likened unto the human body. And you know the passage of Scripture, of course, is 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Last week our focus was on the first 10 verses. And today we pick it up at verse 11 and 12. Particularly there at verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. And what I'd like us to do as we go through this passage of Scripture is to notice three characteristics of the body of Christ that we should celebrate. And let us celebrate them today with great joy and great freedom. What are they? First of all, that we have unity. Unity. Verse 12, even as the body is one and yet has many members, and all the members of the body, though they are many, are one body, so also is Christ. 
For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. Paul is saying, first of all, how do we get into the body? He's answering that question, the body of Jesus Christ. We don't get into it by birth. We don't get into it by water baptism. We get into it by what he calls the baptism of the Holy Spirit that makes us members of this very special body, the body of Jesus Christ. He goes on to say, verse um, 15, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I am not a part of the body, is it not for this reason any less a part of the body? And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I am not a part of the body, is it not for this reason any less a part of the body? And the answer is no, it's still a part of the body, even if it doesn't like where it has been placed. First of all, unity. Notice that we are unified because we become members one of another. Paul says, my thumb can't wake up someday and say to itself, you know, I don't like the other four fingers because they have much more sameness and I am different and I am tired of playing this role I'm leaving. No, it's stuck with the other members of the body. And if you're a member of Jesus Christ, you can walk away from a church, you can walk away even into the world, and, and you will be severed from the body emotionally and in some sense spiritually. But if you're a true believer, you still belong. But you're going to look very gruesome. I like to tell that story. It's a true story in Canada of a man who was visiting with a medical doctor, and the medical doctor was on call. Some of you doctors know how often that happens. And so the doctor had to leave, and he said, make yourself at home. If you're hungry, just take whatever you like. And so the guest, after the doctor left, opened the fridge to get something to eat. And there he saw a human hand wrapped in a plastic bag. And the story that I heard was that after he saw that, he wasn't hungry anymore. <laughs> Now, you know, that's odd, isn't it? Why, why should that be repulsive? After all, what's wrong with the human hand? I'm looking at both of mine, and you can look at yours, and the hand is very beautiful, intricately made by God. Nothing wrong with it. You can 